Hey guys, I've tried uh, three times now to make this video, but I keep getting cut off because my phone storage wasn't big enough. So I had to drop it down from 4K down to 1080p. Um, so yeah, sorry about that. Anyway, I'm um, going to go through the ECM wiring harness system. Um, first thing I need to get out of the way is that I have a ALH TDI. Okay? I'm not 100% sure if this correlates to other versions of the TDI, but this is what I have. I have a Malone Stage 1.5 tune specified to delete EGR and keeping certain other things. Um, I believe that if you were to call them and say, hey, I need the tune that Nick Osterbahn or Bad Vision has, uh, they would easily be able to say, yep, we can get you that, because I've heard a couple people have already asked for that. Um, so this correlates specifically to that tune. Now, the next thing I have to say is that if you do not want to cut things out of your harness, you do not have to. Once that has been deleted off the ECM, that sensor, no matter even if it's on the vehicle or dangling in the air, is no longer connected to by the ECM and will not interfere with anything. Um, I can speak to that, for example, that I have my EGR deleted off of this ECM, but the plug is sitting right here and it plugs in. It doesn't affect anything. I can unplug it and it stays running, run, drives just fine. Um, it doesn't hurt to leave it on. It doesn't matter. It was more work for me to tear this apart and delete it out, so I said, you know what? I don't have time for that. It doesn't matter. So let's go ahead and break down the ECM uh, wiring. There are two, big, uh, two ports on the back here, a big one and a small one. Uh, or a long and short, depending on how you, or where you are, what they call it. Um, the short side here, nothing was deleted off of this. I didn't need to do anything to it. Pretty much it is how it is. The only thing I did was take apart the factory loom, rewire everything to be in the orientation that I need. So the length where it spidered out and everything and just changed a few little things um, as far as where taping and joints were. But it's pretty much Excuse me, it's pretty much exactly where it was. This big plug right here, we'll go back to this in a second. Um, I'll get with you. This is all by the uh, fuel injection pump. The, uh, I believe that's the oil pressure sensor or oil temperature sensor. So one on the filter housing um, for the cooler and everything. I um, believe that is an AC plug. I don't know. One of those is a... Uh, you know, whatever. They plug in, you just gotta remember where they come out, but I didn't touch in it, I didn't move anything, didn't do anything, they're all that long to begin with. So, um, this big plug here, we're gonna go ahead and go over to my power bus unit here. Um, this is the other end of that plug. Now, a lot of stuff was taken out of this just because it wasn't needed. I decided to delete it. Again, you don't need to take it out if you don't want to. Um, this uh, here, I believe, is all AC related. Uh, it's just a dead end, does nothing right now. Um, the truck I had it in didn't have an uh, uh, AC unit, so no worries. But on the other side of this is these three wires. There is a purple and black, a, I'm sorry, violet and black. There is a yellow and black and a violet and red, or red and violet. Um, those three are all sensor power. So when you send power to them, it sends power to the sensors to say do their job. Um, so when you flip this bus on, this fuse bus, when I sent power from my toggle switch to this, it turned it all on. So here's the battery constant for the ECM, which all comes out of this brown plug on your system. When you pull it out of the car, it'll be on the, on the harness. You'll see it. It's, it's absolutely great to keep that. You don't have to, you can do what you want to do, but I'm just trying to tell you how it is on my system. Um, obviously there was a few things I deleted off of there that weren't needed. I used a Haynes manual to decide what was needed and what was not needed, along with the information from the tune. Anyway, so big gauge wire goes constant, inline fuse, you always want an inline fuse with that, just be safe. Um, and then again, three more wires, blue and yellow, violet black yellow and black. From my understanding, the yellow and blacks are straight sensors like uh, N75, EGR, um, coolant sensor. I believe those are all the power supplies for just straight sensors. So um, with this power coming out both ways, it gets, obviously this side of it will have the sensors for the N75, the MAF, the uh, MAP, and then the other side will connect over here and connect into this big harness, which gives it power to the injection, um, the coolant, whatever these are, AC, I think, on one of those side, alternator, possibly on the other. 
um, that's that's what it breaks down to for there um, so real simple that way so now we've discussed power my setup again turn the switch on powers this sends the battery's constant obviously sends the wake-up signal the ECM the ECM is now on and awake as soon as I turn the key on my starter on my Toyota side because the Toyota side has the starter wire on the body harness so as soon as I turn that starter wire the engine starts to rotate the ECU is awake realizes that it's rotating and fires up I mean I say it like it takes a second it doesn't it it knows instantly as soon as I start rotating it it's it's ready to go so let's break it down on the orange plug the orange plug has to do with the information this is the OBD2 port real simple for basic operation out of the OBD2 no wires were snipped out of this thing there is a red and white a gray and white two browns and then an orange and black pair now the orange and black pair I believe are can high and can low the red and white is just straight power so you just need to have this run you know obviously you can see my extra wire here this did run to my fuse block so when I turn the fuse block on power went to that as well ground is obvious that's got to be grounded K line goes into the orange connector here and you'll read in your manual which one is the K line I had to solder mine because mine had broke while I was uh, pulling it uh, apart the, the shroud and everything so it's soldered I took all the wrap off and everything so you guys see that but you can see there's quite a few things that I deleted and then there's a quite a few that I left in um, I believe um, I have everything left on my system for AC tachometer and stuff like that check engine light I believe I even left that by uh, even though I think it's deleted but like again I said you don't need you don't care um, there is one interesting thing as you go through you'll notice um, this side has a wire coming out, a number four port. They're all numbered too, by the way. One, two, three, four. But then if I go to the other side, which came from the engine, there's nothing, not a thing. And that was factory. I don't know, it was just a dead end. Um, I would assume it was probably something between the diesel and gas difference. Because um, on the, the body side, there was something obviously, but there was nothing on the, on the, the, the harness for the diesel side that correlated. So. Anyway, easy peasy. Blue. Blue is absolutely in everything to do with your fuel pedal. Um, real easy. Really easy. It's still in the truck anyway, sorry. There are, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, so seven wires. Um, anyway, uh, I've got mine extended and lengthened um, that go to the pedal, and then there's one that goes to, again, ba -ba, power block. So that's it you just send power to everything is kind of simple um, because uh, the other side of this is where it drew power from somewhere under the dash elsewhere that wire was disconnected um, you know when I did the swap so whatever ran power to it everything works I haven't had a single problem with my setup uh, buh, 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 white connector I got no idea I really don't it hasn't affected me running or anything uh, the two wires that are coming out of here, I deleted a few out of there. Um, the only thing that I, like I said, I anticipated for was, yeah, it's not going to focus, um, tachometer and AC. So it might have something to do with that. And then ground harness. This looks like a, a mess, but it's really not that bad. It's just how the harness, uh, the wires interconnect and move against each other. Again, the only reason you need to take it apart is if you have to wire somewhere specific, if you have to route it to where you need to. My gas pedal wires off this blue connector, sorry, fuel wire connector, um, weren't long enough, so all I did was cut and splice. I mean, I put in wire to wire, just an extra three feet length in between, and it worked just fine. So anyway, guys, that's, that's it. That's a basic, basic breakdown. Make sure your grounds are right. Delete what you need. Don't delete. Doesn't matter. Get it hooked up. But this is as simple as it gets. Brown plug, three wires. Big connector plug, three wires. That's the main end of the engine harness. OBD2 gets a power wire. So that goes to the CAN bus. And then the fuel pedal gets a wire. On the other side here, that gets a wire. Power. That's it. Main power. After that, it's up to your starter to tell the engine it's rotating. The engine will catch on and know, hey, I've got to do this. Um, yep, looks like more AC stuff I got here. So, 
Anyway, guys, hope that helps. If you need any more details, please comment, and I will get to them as soon as I possibly can. Thank you much.